Hello, my name is Diane and today I want to talk about some of the books coming out in March. First up, coming out on March 2nd, is The Great Big Demon Hunting Agency by Peter Oxley. The story takes place in 1868 London where the streets are filled with thieves, murderers, and demons. The story follows Spencer and Bart who are criminals who maybe aren't the best at what they do. They have both the police and other criminals after them and they decide the best way to solve their problems is to clean up their act and stop living a life of crime. They decide to open the great big demon hunting agency and hunt the demons in the city. They soon find out that there are a lot more demons in London than they were expecting, than they think that there should be. There's also a mysterious group that's probably linked to women disappearing. They find that they've got a lot more work cut out for them than they expected on this new path. So Spencer and Bart together must not only change their ways, but also try and save the city. I think this book sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. It seems like it'll be a little bit more lighthearted. I think there might be some humor and hijinks with Spencer and Bart trying to change their game, but I think there'll also be enough danger and action along the way. Coming out on March 2nd is The London Seance Society by Sarah Penner. I read The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, which was her debut that came out last year, and I was pleasantly surprised with it. It's half historical fiction, half contemporary, dual timeline following two different women whose stories are somewhat intertwined but primarily pretty separate from one another. And those are all things that I don't typically read a lot of. I don't really gravitate towards historical, contemporary, or dual timelines, but I think she did it really well. They all worked really well for me, which was very surprising, so I'm really looking forward to reading her latest release. The story begins in 1873 Paris, where a renowned spiritualist brings people back who have been murdered to reveal their murderer's identity. When a young woman comes to Paris to learn about her sister's death and those circumstances, she winds up accompanying the spiritualist to England to solve a high-profile murder. The two women join forces with the London Seance Society, which is a group of men who solve mysteries together, and they must work with these men to solve this murder. So this sounds like it'll be an interesting murder mystery little twists and turns along the way and I like the addition of the spiritual aspect. Sounds like it'll be really intriguing and bring another element into solving whatever is going on here. Also coming out on March 2nd is Lies We Sing to the Sea by Sarah Underwood. In this story each spring Ithaca demands that 12 maidens are hung because that is what Poseidon has demanded from them. Our main character Leto becomes one of these maidens and she finds out that her death is not what she expected. Instead, she wakes up on an island. She is met there by another girl named Melantho who tells her that there is a way to put a stop to this and it is to kill the Prince of Ithaca. Obviously, deeply based on mythology, I'm interested to see what exactly is going on behind all of this, what Leto discovers after she has been condemned and then awoken as she uncovers what's going on behind all of these hangings and if she can stop them. Then on March 12th we come with Vengeance by H.G. Murley. The story follows Felix who is the heir to House Lee Van. He is a soldier who is just trying to follow orders and fit in amongst his peers. He doesn't really want to stick out beyond being another soldier. They are in the middle of a very long-standing war when there is an attack that primarily affects civilians rather than hitting soldiers. He feels much more compelled to step out of line and do something about it. He learns about this rebellion that is gaining traction that could have the potential to bring an end to this war even sooner, but of course that too eventually becomes dangerous and is costing lots of lives. Felix really seems to just want to put an end to this, but he's not really sure if anyone's got the best way to go about that. I think this book sounds really interesting. I really like stories about rebellions coming in, and I also like the fact that our main character is not really sure if 
following his duty and doing as he's supposed to, as he thinks he should, or following his morals and taking a route that could potentially end the war sooner, but isn't really certain of the cost, the price that they're going to pay to make that happen. I think it's really interesting to see characters in that type of moral dilemma where they're trying to do what they think is right, but they don't always have a good option to get there. Coming out on March 21st is The Lies of the Ajungo by Moses Osiutomi. The story begins in the City of Lies, which is facing an extreme drought and has been for generations. The only way they receive water is with a deal they have made with the Ajungo Empire, in which when everyone turns 13, they have to cut out their tongues. Tutu is about to turn 13, but he's not sure his mother's going to make it that long. So he makes a deal that his mother will receive some water to keep her going, and he will set out into the desert and search for water, not only for his mother, but for his entire city. This is a novella, so it's a fairly short story, but it sounds like it'll be very interesting. I've read a few stories of younger characters setting out on a quest alone, very dangerous, them versus the environment and whatever dangers may await them that they haven't seen because they've never been outside of their home. And I am looking forward to seeing Tutu go on his quest and try and save everyone in his city and hopefully end the cycle of having to cut out everyone's tongues just so they can barely get by. And finally, coming out on March 28th is Infinity Gate by M.R. Carey. In this book, we have the Pandominium, which is a trade alliance between millions of worlds, except it's not really millions of worlds, it's just millions of versions of Earth. Somewhere within these multiple realities, an AI becomes a threat to everything that the Pandominium has built, and they are willing to do anything it takes to eradicate it. Meanwhile, a scientist is looking for a solution to her own Earth's problems. They're on the brink of environmental collapse, and in searching for a solution, she stumbles upon interdimensional travel. While this could be the solution she's looking for, it's also put her in the middle of a very large-scale war. I think this story is going to have a lot of danger, a lot of tension as we go through this war and all of the people involved in it. I really like sci-fi that tackles this big anything is possible and you never really know where exactly you could be at any given moment with all of these multiple realities and interdimensional travel. It's a concept that I've always really enjoyed seeing in sci-fi and I think this is a very interesting take on that where the realities are not only existing simultaneously but there is one organization that's sort of orchestrating everything or tying everything together and aware of all of the realities all at once. I also like the addition of AI as a threat to all of that. That's something that started to come up more and more now that AI is a thing in real life, or at least in different ways, but it's still not something I've really seen a lot of incorporated into stories, so I think that'll be a really cool aspect to see. So those are some of the books coming out next month that I'm really looking forward to. Let me know if you're looking forward to any of these or if there's anything else you're excited about. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time.